quite a lot of interesting things going on. A lot of it has to, is stuff that you guys might be interested in. It has to do with data harvesting. Uh, there's a company called Cambridge Analytics, I think, which is run by some ultra-right billionaires. Uh, 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 Peter Thiel, the guy who owns PayPal and a bunch of other things. Uh, Robert Mercer, who's a big hedge fund manager, multi-billionaire, a couple of others. Uh, what they've been doing, and this essentially gave the election to Trump, is extremely careful data analysis. There's a ton of data now from Facebook and other things about people's personal preferences and attitudes and you know the, the feelings and are you depressed you know all kinds of things and uh, what they're doing is looking carefully at this data and analyzing it to see if you can find small numbers of people in particular areas who can be who are vulnerable to one or another form of manipulation mm -hmm. and what they're doing is trying to say look if they're kind of tend to be liberal, try to get them to get so disillusioned that they won't vote. Mm. And if they tend to be, say, traditionally conservative, maybe religious or whatever, uh, try to get them to do, you know, reach them individually in ways which will uh, increase the probability that they'll vote for the right wing. This has small effects, but the elections are won on very small effects. Like uh, Trump's, as you know, Trump lost the popular vote but by a couple of million. But in particular counties that made the difference, a couple of hundred thousand votes shifted the election. In England, Brexit was the same. They estimate about maybe 600,000 votes in the whole countries switched it. Now these companies uh, using you know, a lot of complicated data processing and statistics and so on are working on ways to try to control the electoral process. I mean, this is way more important than any of the nonsense about the Russian hacking. Uh, that's all garbage. But this stuff is real. Uh, and, it's, uh, uh, and it's right in front of our eyes. It's the people we know, you know, the MIT students going off to work in these things. Uh, and it has a big effect on controlling uh, formal democratic systems. Uh, they feel, this is Steve Bannon, this is his image of how you control the world, you know. Uh, these are people who are influential, they have tons of money, they deeply reactionary, and they, have a f they want to use uh, modern uh, data processing, uh, you know, uh, big data, statistical analysis, and so on, to see if you can just find ways of swinging elections by going after individual vulnerabilities using the massive data that people provide through uh, Google and Facebook and all of this stuff. I mean, you know, Google and the rest of them use it to, for advertisers so that advertisers can go after you individually and say, you know, like, you know, you try to get a book on Amazon and they suggest 10 other books you ought to buy because they've got so much information on you that they think maybe, maybe I can sort of get and sell this one. Now that's going on all the time, but here it's right in the middle of the political system. And it's really significant, uh, quite unlike the Russian hacking story. This is real, you know, and it's not very far from us. In fact, it's happening right here, you know. And there are things that can be done about that, you know, like exposing it for one thing. These should be live issues, I think, among students. Do we want to devote our lives to destroying democracy? Well, maybe. Yeah.